got a couple of people on here. Welcome. It's Pamela Goodman from Roosless. I see Jan. Welcome, Jan. We have 426, so we've got about four minutes to go, and we're waiting for the candidate to get on, Sarah. And then we'll get started. Hi, Pam. Hello, Sarah. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. You look lovely. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. As you, as do you always. Oh, thank you. But I, I, we did a 10 o'clock um, Wise Women Wednesday. I don't know. Were you on that by any chance? I wasn't. I, those are, that's during my instructional hours. So oh, it was okay. teaching. Right. <laughs> of course, you run the classroom. Of <laughs> Kayla, hi Kayla. I see my mom on the my mom's on the call and Barbara's on the call. All right. <laughs> and Becca's um, doing Facebook at the same time, so um, so I'll keep my eye on the chat box, um, Sarah. Okay. And, um, hi, Jan. Welcome. Hello. Hi, Mom. <laughs> oh, that is so sweet. I love it. We love your daughter, Mom. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we do, too. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. You must be very proud of her. We love her very much. We've got um, Noelle Ferguson, Tina Certain. Hi, Tina. Linda Gonzalez just joined us, another candidate, yay. Andrew Grubb just joined us. And it's really looking in here. I've got still at 429, so we'll hold off for just, just a minute or so.
had to get some water. <laughs> Thank you, Unmuted. How's everyone? Thank you. How are you? Very good, thank you. Very good. So, yeah, I think um, I'm glad you could join us. So, um, yeah, we're going to mute everybody with the exception of um, the candidate and myself. I've got 4.30. I do want to let everyone know that um, we do record these um, really for the candidates' um, benefit, for everyone's benefit, actually. Um, but we do record them. Um, and um, Sarah we can use this then and her go forward um, digital and her website. And we'll get it up on our website as an endorsed candidate. And um, so anyway, but I would like to let everybody know that, that we are recording, including myself. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and the candidate. Um, it, it's really my pleasure to be doing these with um, Ruthless Endorsed Candidates, um, which um, we are doing one-on-ones um, for her supporters, her staffers, for um, their constituents, their voters, um, anyone who's interested um, and is, is unfortunately homebound now. We would love to be having, and actually usually I do have a glass of wine by this time of day when I, when I do these because we'd be having a cocktail party right now probably in <laughs> someone's living room and uh, we'd be enjoying snacks and wine and um, Sarah would then be able to talk to you about um, her campaign. But first of all, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Pamela Goodman and I'm the president and CEO of Ruthless Florida. And um, I'm joined on this call by two of our great um, staff members, our political de director, Kayla Waringen, and Becca Teeter, who is our program and communications director and puts these, she's the Cecil B. DeMille of Ruthless. She's putting all of these great productions together. So I wanna thank the staff again for being here and, um, and supporting these. So um, before I talk about Sarah, I kind of want to talk just quickly about all the races that Ruthless are involved in. So for those of you that don't know, and you've probably heard this a thousand times, but I'm going to repeat it once more. We're a very laser focused um, organization on one mission, and that is to identify, recruit, train, mentor, and help get elected progressive democratic pro-choice women to all levels of Florida state government starting at school board, city and county commission, state legislature, house and senate, uh, cabinet, and gubernatorial. We used to talk about um, the races such as school board and city and county commission races as building the bench. Um, those were our future legislators, our future congresswomen, our future um, governors. I believe truly, if you look at what is happening in this state and, and this country, but let's, let's talk about what's in my pay grade anyway, which is the state of Florida, that these are no longer bench positions. Um, being a representative on a school board where you are the first line or last line of defense, however you want to look at it, to protecting our public school system, protecting the integrity of our curriculum for, for those students, protecting those teachers, um, fighting against uh, a school board member, fighting against the for-profit charter schools that do not have approved curriculum and approved assessments by the teachers. Um, they, they are really the frontline defense in our municipalities, um, in our cities, and in our counties all across the state. So the protection of public education, yes, legislatively, we need a lot of um, laws passed and a lot of continued regulation and oversight, but these are our frontline people now that are protecting what is, I believe, is a sacred part, and the Democratic Party does as well, a sacred part um, of, of our government. So with that, I want to thank Sarah Leonardi for stepping up um, to the plate and running to be what I believe is an extremely, extremely important position in Broward County um, running for school board. So let me tell you just a little bit about Sarah. Um, she is a teacher in Broward County Public Schools. She um, obviously, a lot of our uh, uh, candidates, all, she also happens to be a community activist. She's a Broward resident who, she is running for the Broward School Board District 3. 
She's running to put resources back into the hands of teachers, improve school safety, and no one knows how important that is more than Broward County, home of Parkland. Increase the transparency throughout the district. She's lived and worked as a teacher in Broward County since 2014. She attended the University of Miami where she earned a Bachelor of Science in Education. And she's been working as a public school teacher for eight years, primarily teaching high school English. In 2016, she was voted Teacher of the Year at Coconut Creek High School. She has sponsored a variety of school clubs throughout her tenure in Broward County Public Schools. And she currently serves as the Literary Fair Coordinator at Nova High School. Sarah is an active volunteer at her church in Pompano Beach and developed her passion for politics through her involvement in groups, one of which we share a lot of common interest in, Sarah, um, where I just came from before this position, the League of Women Voters um, of Florida and Broward County. Uh, as a seasoned public school teacher and respected community activist, Sarah is very much uniquely equipped to represent the interests of both the teachers and students of Broward County District 3 as their next school board member. Ruthless Florida does not endorse easily um, candidates. So we do not endorse every woman that we work with. Um, we, wor we, we, we give them tough love. Um, we give them love as well and training. Um, but I'm happy to say that Sarah Leonardi is a um, endorsed candidate of Ruthless Florida. And if you go to our website, www.ruthslistfl.org and click on our candidates, you'll see her listed there along with all the rest of our currently endorsed candidates. You can click on her name and it'll take you directly to her website um, where you can learn more about her, read about her and hopefully hit that donate um, button as well. But with that and for her to talk a little bit more specifically um, about it, it is truly, truly my pleasure to um, introduce to you and turn it over to one of the loveliest women I've ever met, but um, one that I see has the soul of a tiger and is gonna be your best fighter and represent both the students, parents and teachers in Broward County as the next school board member. Sarah Leonardi, it's over to you. <laughs> that is quite the introduction, Pam. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for this opportunity today. Um, and thank you so much for the endorsement. You know, I first learned about Ruth List back in 2018, I believe, when I was volunteering with Emma Collum. And I heard her speak about Ruth List at one of her fundraisers. And so I started following. And last year I went to a conference and I never imagined that I would be in this situation today. So it is really special to me um, to have this endorsement and to have this opportunity to speak with Ruth List members. And I'm such a proud member. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Our pleasure, our pleasure. <laughs> So um, maybe we can get the slide started. Um, Kayla? We've got our backroom producers here. Which I'll <laughs> get that um, up. Becca, if you can give me access, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Um, you can help me out with that and then we can get the slide started. Um, yeah, so a little bit of, while we're waiting for that, a little bit about me. Um, I, I'm, my mother is actually on this call right now, uh, Jan, and she was a teacher and she's a big reason why I became a teacher. Um, you know, one of my, my friends, Jacqueline Rogers Shaw, posted something yesterday about how service is the rent that we pay to live on this earth. And my mother really instilled that in me. And so, um, you know, I, I became a teacher to serve my community. Uh, I saw when I was growing up overseas, what, what um, power, uh, access to a good education would have uh, for a lot of people that I, I lived around and lived with. Um, and I wanted to be a part of that because I think that, and I still, I still believe that education is the way that you change the world. We start with, with educating our kids and giving our kids every opportunity to improve their lives and be successful. And, um, you know, during my teaching career, I've really seen how difficult it is to do the job of teaching, and it doesn't have to be that way. Um, you know, when I was in college, a lot of my professors would say that 
you know, you have to close your door and do the best you can in your classroom and just ignore all of the nonsense that's going on outside. And I found that really unacceptable. Um, and so I want to be a part of changing a lot of these policies that make the job of teaching so difficult and make, you know, the job of being a student not as positive as it should be. Um, and really helping our kids be successful and empowering, empowering our teachers to be successful in that endeavor. Great, great. Okay, do we have a slides? Yay. <laughs> we're, we're good. There we go. There we go. We can skip to, because we just did the about, about Sarah, so we can skip to the slide uh, about our COVID-19 response. So, you know, Part of being a teacher and part of being, you know, a community leader is being very flexible and responsive and answering questions and connecting people with resources. And so when um, it became clear that this was really going to be a crisis here in Florida and here in Broward County, our campaign moved really quickly to try to um, respond to the needs of our community. So. First, we suspended all in-person field activities and fundraising um, to be really respectful of the health and, and well-being of people in our community. Uh, right after that, we, we built a COVID-19 page on our website, so uh, making sure that our community is connected with resources from Broward County Public Schools, but also the Florida Department of Education. Um, and then we began really aggressively phone banking um, in vulnerable communities. So phone banking, not in the sense of necessarily starting with asking someone for a vote, uh, but just asking people how they're doing, if they have needs that need to be met, um, if they need to be connected with certain resources. And we've gotten a really, really good response from that. And um, we're continuing to do that. And then finally, since I can't knock on doors, which is something I love to do and I think is so important in a campaign, since I can't do that, um, I've started a Trusted Teacher Tuesdays, a Facebook Live event um, every Tuesday at 4.30, where um, I've actually had the, the true privilege of having two teachers on so far I've interviewed. Um, one is an amazing community activist, Tina Jaramillo. Um, she's a teacher, a parent, and she's also the vice president of Women's March Broward. Um, so I had her on two weeks ago where she talked a lot about, you know, as a parent, how has she been able to cope with um, having her kids at home? Her husband's also a teacher. So having to, you know, juggle all of those different roles at the same time as her kids trying to learn. Um, so that was really beneficial. And then yesterday I had a really good friend of mine. He's the band director at the high school that I teach at. He's a veteran and he's a former first responder, as well as a teacher, a parent of four. Um, he's also married to a teacher. So he was able to answer a lot of really interesting questions that I had um, from his very unique perspective. And we're, I'm just trying to connect our community with resources and as much information as possible. I think that that's what people really uh, yearn for right now in, in this really uncertain time. And, so I'm really thankful to everyone who's been really helpful with, with our COVID-19 response. So we can move on to the next slide. Um, so I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the campaign platform and, you know, all of these issues have been really near and dear to my heart um, as it like throughout my teaching career, but I think they're especially relevant right now in, in light of everything that's going on. Um, and so the, the big purpose of our campaign is to, you know, uplift the voices of the people who work in school and the people who go to school, so our kids. And that starts with teacher pay and just generally resources. So, um, you know, teacher pay in the last decade in the state of Florida has actually declined 10%. Uh, when you adjust for inflation. In Broward County, uh, what our raise that we just got back in March doesn't even account for inflation this year. Um, and that really is an issue with not building a budget, um, starting the budget with salary raises for employees. So it, I, I can't imagine, you know, a, a company negotiating a, a contract for a school year, you know, starting in March. Um, it, was, it was really pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, really prioritizing employee salaries 
um, building a budget around that. And I think that, you know, having a fresh teacher perspective on the board um, would really prioritize that. Um, Finally, you know, I want to talk about the needs of our students in our communities. I think that, you know, as a teacher, I've seen my kids really cry out for more mental health services. And I think that we're going to see, you know, after this pandemic is over that our kids are really going to be in need of more services. And that's been a, a central part of my campaign is um, expanding our mental health resources at our school system, but also connecting our kids with the resources in our communities. Um, when I talk about resources as well, I want to talk about our school buildings and the supplies that our teachers and our kids need to get through the school day. Um, so making sure that kids go to school in buildings that, you know, have roofs that don't leak when it rains in the state of Florida, um, have classrooms that aren't, you know, mold, don't have moldy desks. Um, and that's really about managing tax dollars responsibly, which you know, really needs to be improved upon right now. And finally, just transparency throughout our district. So uh, being communicative, um, being open and accessible to parents who maybe come from marginalized communities that don't necessarily feel comfortable in our schools. And that's really, really important to me, both as a teacher, you know, throughout my teaching career, but also as a, a community leader. Um, so these are some issues that are really important. And I think, again, you know, in the midst of everything that's happening right now, uh, you'll see become even more and more relevant. So we can move on to the next slide. So we've been able to make all of this happen um, because of my amazing volunteers. Um, I'm especially thankful to my volunteers because a lot of people think, you know, school board campaigns aren't, aren't uh, that important. Um, they're not gl as glamorous as, you know, volunteering on, on a congressional or a, a presidential campaign. And I've been really, really fortunate to have over 30 volunteers. Um, they've knocked on over 2,000 doors with me, made over 2,000 phone calls in the last month. Um, mm -hmm and just spent countless hours, you know, helping with sign-in at events, um, logging my petitions, and really they're just passionate about advocating for kids and teachers and, and the people who work in our schools. And so um, they're the main reason why this campaign has been able to be so successful. We can move on to the next slide. So fundraising. <laughs> This was something that, you know, as a teacher was really intimidating to me. A lot of people said, you know, you're a teacher, you're not going to be able to fundraise. You don't have, um, you know, the kind of friends who can max out to you. Um, but we've been really successful so far. Uh, we've had over, uh, we've had 384 donors. Okay. And the reason we've been able to, to raise over $37,000 since August is because of small dollar donations. So, you know, more than 60% of our donations have been under $100. And this is actually the highest amount um, that's been fundraised in this specific race since 2012. And it really is, again, because of the teachers and community members who, um, who, can only give 20 or $30, but then they give that and they give again and they're just so supportive. And um, so I'm continuing fundraising. It's tough in this, this environment of COVID-19 and you know people losing their jobs and, and uh, I wanna be respectful of that. Uh, but so I've been very lucky to have a, a good start so far in this campaign. And we can move to the next slide. Um, some other big milestones for me are my endorsements. And so um, obviously the Ruth's List endorsement was so exciting for me. I was really, really nervous for my interview with you, Pam. <laughs> but um, it really, it, it, it was one of the most special moments of the campaign to get the Ruth's List endorsement. Another big endorsement that we recently got was the Broward Teachers Union. 
And um, I was really, really excited and really proud of that. You know, I've been a union member ever since I started my teaching career. And I believe so deeply in what the labor movement does. And, you know, I had the privilege of going to Philadelphia last year with the American Federation of Teachers for a political boot camp. And I, you know, I am, I just love my union and the work that my union does. And I'm so proud to have their endorsement. Um, I've worked really hard to get the endorsements of a few elected officials like Rep. Evan Jenny, Rep. Michael Gottlieb, um, and Julie Carson, who is a commissioner in uh, Wilton Manors in one of the big cities that my district encompasses. Um, and then obviously the Ruthless Vice Chair, the esteemed Emma Cullum. Um, she's been an incredible mentor to me um, and she's been so helpful and I wouldn't be where I am without her. And so it's a, a real honor to have her endorsement. Um, and then my very first endorsement actually was the Broward Young Democrats. And so that was, that was really exciting. They announced that um, at my campaign kickoff. So right. very cool. Um, we can move on to the next slide. So um, again, in campa campaigning in the midst of COVID-19, you know, I've been really aggressively phone banking, um, but also been very active on social media. So um, I ask that you follow uh, on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram if you search my name, Sarah Leonardi. Uh, you can access all of that content on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, and then on my last slide, my website um, where you can access, you can see all the endorsements, um, read my bio. I've also linked, uh, I've written about six op-eds in our local newspaper, The Sun Sentinel. Um, those are up on the website. Um, you can also donate on the website. We are doing a donate 2020, $20.20 um, fundraising campaign. Um, so if you feel so inclined, that would, it would be my deepest honor. Um, you can donate there and then my phone number and my email address. So, um, I don't know, can we open it up to Q&A? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, Tina wants to know, let, let's talk about fundraising for a little bit. Because that's, that, that, again, no one ever wants to talk about it, but um, uh, it's, it's a primary must. Um, for anyone that, that, that is running a campaign. Um, and, and a lot of um, people don't ask the question, and so you're never able to explain, like, what do you really need all that money for? You do all this fundraising, and you always say, we're raising more, and, and we've done this. How, what, what do you use that money for, and why is it so important? And Tina's asking specifically, not about um, what the money is used for, but I'd like you to hit on that. But um, how have you raised the majority of that money? Has it been um, at your door to door? Has it been on call time? Has it, we can, if you can give a, give a couple of inside tips because we have a couple of other candidates I see now. Yeah. Well, well, what do you use the money for? Why is it so important to raise money? In, in this? For direct mail. <laughs> direct mail. So mail, like sending mailers to voters. Um, it's terribly expensive, uh, but it's also very, very important. And um, it costs, you know, I, I'm running in a district that's 170,000 registered voters, actually more yes. than that. My win number is less, is much, much less than that because my election is in August. Um, but it's still, it's still tens of thousands of people. Right. Um, and it costs a lot of money to mail to those people. Uh, so that's, gen that's really what I'm fundraising for. That's what the majority of my money that I'm fundraising for goes to. And that's actually why I have so many volunteers on my campaign is because a school board race is relatively low dollar. Um, and I can't afford to pay, you know, a huge staff. Um, so I'm lucky to, to have so many volunteers who dedicate so much time uh, to helping this campaign be successful. Yeah. Um, so that's generally what the key goes to. You, you, you explain that perfectly. I mean, um, so whatever race you're running for um, in this day and age, and gosh, particularly now with what's going on, where field programs, which is what Sarah talks about, one of her favorite things to, to do, and her great volunteers that have been out there knocking doors and doing the field program, has now come to a grinding halt. And so all of those voters that she was touching, that she was reaching, that she was able to talk to at doors and with her volunteers, she now has to touch in a different way to inform them about A, who she is, why she's running, and what her platform is. And the only way that she can do that 
certainly is through avenues like this and through digital, um, but direct mail and, and all of those really beyond knocking on doors, not this, we do this, you know, this is, this is free of charge, but most of those cost money. Yeah. And that's, that's the bottom line is where that money goes is there's, there's no way, even if we did not have this horrible virus that is impacting all of our lives right now, there's no way that Sarah could reach the tens of thousands of voters that she really needs to reach just by knocking on doors and being on the phone. She, she needs help either digitally or through mail. And that's what that money is, is for. So you yeah. explained it perfectly. How'd you raise the money? Tina, Tina wants to know. Yeah. So, um, you know, the, People usually say that, you know, you're, you raise the majority of your money through call time. Um, I raise a lot of my money through events. Uh, so part of that was calling people and telling them come to my event. Um, but that was really where I was able to raise a lot of my money was hosting. Uh, I would have people host fundraisers for me. Um, they would in kind, you know, the food and drinks. And um, I would, I would get a lot of donations through those. Um, some of that has been call time and then just like sitting down with people for the first time that I haven't met. Um, so sitting down with people and then, you know, making me uncomfortable, I ask for a donation. Um, but really it was through events. Right, okay. Tina's agreeing with you. She's helping a candidate and said that, um, that, that that's a good good venue for her too. We are big proponents of, of um, call time actually. Yeah. <laughs> on the phone so um it's it's a com it's a combo platter again it's it's talking to as many people as you can in the easiest way possible and getting your platform out there and not being afraid which is the most intimidating thing as a candidate to do that ask um, and whether it is for five dollars or ten dollars or twenty dollars um it's 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 it doesn't come natural to anyone um, <laughs> whether you're running an organization or doing it or whether you're running for it for a campaign but um, it's 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 a, it's an important tool that that you've got to have in your toolbox. Mm -hmm. Really good question. I can tell this is coming from um, well, it could be from any number of parents that are out there that are um, all of a sudden struggling with a new um, a, a career alternative, a new career. Mm -hmm. um, their kids are at home, and they're trying to um, do the best job that they can for you, the 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 teacher. Um, what advice do you have for parents in, in how to make this crazy time for them? Um, I mean, it's, it's funny. I have a lot of friends, and by the end of the day, I mean, I'm sure you talk to the parents, too. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're ready to, to, to pull their hair out. I think they've gained great respect for your profession and for what you do um, and see how um, extremely unqualified they are for it. But um, seriously, what as, as a teacher and knowing the um, kind of pressures that they're facing and the organizational tactics that they need, what advice would you, would you have for them at home? Yeah, so, you know, one theme that I, I keep coming across throughout all of the parents that I talk to who also happen to be teachers um, are, you know, building routines. And you and I talked about this before the call, you know, making sure you get out of bed at, at a normal time and having breakfast at, at, at a certain time and um, getting dressed. And then, you know, maybe you have an hour of reading time, um, you have an hour of math and really just having a set routine that your kids adhere to on a day-to-day -day basis is so important just to um, keep things relatively normal. And that's actually a really important part of teaching as well. You know, when I was getting my degree in education, uh, routines are a big part of classroom management. So, um, you know, it's, it's entertaining to see a lot of these parents <laughs> have to implement a lot of these, these techniques that teachers have to use on a daily basis. But uh, so routines are really important. I've also heard um, and, and seen with parents, you know, setting uh, like kind of boundaries. And so, you know, when mom is in the office or when mom is at the kitchen table, that's her work time. Um, you don't bother her. <laughs> you, you know, you know, do, do leave her alone. Um, so having kind of boundaries in set locations for different kinds of activities. And so maybe also the kids are in the kitchen doing math and then they're in their bedroom doing their English language arts work. Um, so kind of associating different parts of the home um, to different kinds of learning. Um, 
again, implementing breaks, allowing your kids to have playtime um, and just relax. You know, instructional time even in school isn't the full, what, seven to eight hours that they're in school. And, um, you know, at the elementary school level, your kids should only be doing like three to five hours of instructional time. And it gets a little bit more in middle school and high school. Um, but your kids shouldn't be sitting in front of a computer you know, for seven hours a day doing schoolwork. That's unrealistic and not healthy. Um, and also, you know, uh, being outside, if you have the ability to do so and socially distance, um, allowing kids to be outside in nature. Um, I've been able to take some walks in my, my little community and I've been able to see, you know, these little baby ducklings that are hatching and, uh, Terrible iguanas, <laughs> but um, you know it's really important for your for your kids to get outside and and to engage in that play. Um, so some, I guess, Ruth List asked, should we be worried about screen time? You know, I would say if I could give any piece of advice to parents right now is to give yourself a break um, and cut yourself some slack. Uh, <laughs> you know, this is this is not normal what we're going through and this is not homeschooling it's crisis schooling you're you're trying to get your child to learn in the midst of a crisis and um you know when i again when i was getting my education degree we were taught um, about maslow's hierarchy of, of needs and um you know the the first need a child has is to feel safe and healthy and loved mm -hmm. and you know that is the most important thing that you should be focusing on right now. And if a, if a child spends a little bit too long on the screen, they're going to live, <laughs> you know. Um, so I would I would say give your give yourself a break. Don't don't worry too much about screen time. Um, normally, I would say yeah, limit screen time because that's some that's a battle I'm trying to constantly fight as a teacher is you know getting kids off their phones. But uh, you know, right now is a little bit different. Right. Someone's asking you, um, I guess it's, it's, what was the moment that was like an aha moment for you where you said, I'm absolutely in the right profession. I know that I'm destined to be doing this, but more importantly, what really propelled you to run for school board? Um, what, what was that aha moment? Um, so, you know, sometimes, some days as a teacher, it's really, really difficult but at the end of every day, I feel exhausted um, in a good way. You know, having spent my whole day serving kids, um, you know, working with kids, it just, it fulfills my purpose in life. And, you know, so I don't know that I have one moment that I can point to. Uh, maybe my first year of teaching uh, during, I taught seniors. <laughs> um, right out of college <laughs> and seeing, you know, seeing them graduate, it was really, really emotional um, and going, going to high school graduations and my heart goes out to this year's seniors, uh, but going to high school graduations is always really special and really emotional for me. Um, that always makes me feel, feel really fulfilled, but uh, yeah, I mean, every day at the end of the day, I, I feel good about going to work and, and doing what I'm doing because I know it's it's serving a larger purpose. It, 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 it is. You you are the un, unsung heroes and heroes um, out there. Linda Gonzalez has asked, first of all, she's saying, hi, Sarah. Hi. Um, what should parents say to children um, about when they will go back to school um, and when they can be with their friends again. And actually, um, the, the kind of a segue I just heard today that the president of the um, Federal of uh, Florida Education Association um, made a formal request to Governor DeSantis to not to to extend the homestay through the remainder of this um, school school year. Um, so I, I'd love to hear your opinion on that. And, and it kind of ties in with Linda's question as well. Yeah, um, well, I'm glad that uh, the commissioner did that because I, you know, I did see Ron DeSantis talking a little bit about, oh, uh, I don't know if it was last week or two weeks ago that, you know, no one has died under the age of 25 from COVID-19, which is A, not true. 
Um, but B, there are a lot of people over the age of 25 who work in our schools um, and our kids go home to people who are over the age of 25. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that uh, there was a request for that because I, I do think it would be irresponsible for us to go back to school um, you know, for this school year, at least it, to, to physical buildings, because we are still distance learning, obviously. Um, you know, what do you tell kids? I, you know, honesty is the best policy with kids, because if you're not straight up with them, they know. <laughs> they know when you're when you're hiding something and they know when you're not being entirely honest. And, you know, you need to show them the respect uh, that they deserve by by being straightforward with them and just say, you know, I don't know when you're going to go back to school. Um, you can tell them, you know, the, the, the dates that are on, you know, online, you know, right now we were, we're going to figure out on May 1st, uh, there's going to be a new announcement in Broward schools about whether or not we're going back to school. So I would, I would just give kids as much information as possible. And when they're asking when they can see their friends again, well, I mean, they physically can't see their friends right now, but they can do so online on FaceTime. And um, my friend Tina has been using House Party. And, you know, my niece Lily uh, did a play date on FaceTime. Um, so they can still see their friends and, and they have a way to socially connect with their friends. They just can't do it in, in person. But I'm always honest with kids. I, they, they really know what's what's going on <laughs> they, they, they get it yeah. um, just one one last question and, and it, it's really, it's really personal what can all of us do who aren't teachers um, or who may be parents or even not even parents to help support you to help support the teachers out there because you're dealing with a new normal um, as well so what can we do to to help you and support you in the job that you're dealing with right now yeah, you know, again, um, cut us some slack. <laughs> you know, we're, we're a lot of my friends are learning how to use a lot of these online platforms now. Um, so, you know, be patient with us. Um, you know, I, I've had some parents or I've heard of some parents complaining that, you know, the work is not rigorous enough or their kids aren't busy enough online. And as a teacher, you know, I'm trying to balance you know, my kids who are homeless, um, my kids who have to share a laptop amongst multiple siblings, as well as the child who has access to all of the technology they need. Um, so we're trying to meet a lot of needs at once and uh, teachers just really need people to be patient and understanding of, of the difficult position that we are, we're in. And then, you know, going forward in August and November, vote for people who actively support teachers and who support public education. Exactly. Per perfect, perfect um, wrap up. Right, you're you're going to keep doing your Teacher Tuesdays, right? Yeah, yes, absolutely. Okay. okay. Um, one more time, your website, how to get a hold of you, how to find out more about you, um, the Teacher Tuesdays that you're hosting, how people can follow you. Yeah, so um, I do my Trusted Teacher Tuesdays on Facebook Live every Tuesday at 4.30. Um, so if you go to my Facebook page, if you just search Sarah Leonardi, it'll come up, Sarah Leonardi for Broward County School Board. Um, and my website is electleonardi.com, and you're able to donate there um, if you so choose. Uh, and I'm asking people to donate $20.20. And my phone number um, was on the slide, but my phone number is 954-798-5949. So please give me a call, um, text me if you have any questions or you have a good article to send me, um, any concerns, I'm, I'm always available. So thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Sarah. Best of luck in your campaign. Again, you can go to Ruthless, ruthlessfl.org, our website, click on Sarah, and also see all the rest of our other endorsed candidates, which are growing um, each, each month, um, and see other women that are out there on the front lines running for more school board positions all around our state, city and county commission, state legislature um, races all around our state. 
um, just just as, as talented and inspiring, Sarah, as you have been today. Best of luck on your campaign. Thank you to all of you in Zoom world um, out there for joining us this afternoon. This has been recorded and we'll be sending you, it takes us a couple hours, probably tomorrow morning at this point, um, we'll send you back a copy of this um, recording so that you'll have it just for your edification and Sarah will have it and hopefully you can post it on your website and do with it whatever um, you want to as well. Thank so, you so much everyone for spending time with us and thank you Pam for this opportunity and for spending your time with me today. My, my pleasure and best of luck again. Looking forward to victory and looking forward to congratulating you on the newest school board member <laughs> in Broward County. Thanks so much everyone. Stay safe out there. Have a great evening. Night. Night.